Well, hey, everybody, welcome back to Palm Tree Life. Looking forward to kind of expanding our kingdom in this episode. Looking, we're, I'm going to teach you how to go on a pilgrimage, make some decisions. Um, what I'd really like to do is finish out these duchies, get bamboo, get manding. If we can get the full kingdom of Mali under our reign and the full kingdom of Jen under our reign, uh, we'll do that in this episode. Uh, but we're just going to try to do a bunch of things. I may... Uh, skip over uh, parts just because you, you're familiar with uh, most of these at this point and I may just try to show different decisions that come up uh, throughout uh, the gameplay but I don't want to I don't want to bore you with just keep seeing repetitive things in a beginner's guide like when you see it you're gonna know it you can always go back to the episode and see it again I want to get to the things that you don't know so that I can keep helping you move forward in the game so let's start that. I did want to show you um, in this bure or burr or burre, however you would pronounce this, if we go to attack it, because we do, we are going to want to conquer it to get the full Duchy of Manding, to get the full Kingdom of Mali. But I wanted you to see if we go to try to attack this guy and declare war, it says that we would be breaking a truce. Okay, declaring war would break a truce. And I want you to see where uh, you can see when that truce would end. If you click on your guy, your ruler, and you just hover over here, you can see this is Bure Bure. We declared war on him, and so we are uh, hindered from declaring war on him for three years, which would be March 12th, 880. So you can see we've got about two and a half years left to go. So two and a half years. Sometimes, uh, sometimes your counselor can get that truce to end early with what they do. There's not really a, a thing that you can decide here, but you can just, you can, he does it on his own in the background um, through relationship building and things. And if he can um, get that truce to end early, you can attack him again. So we'll see if that happens. But um, before we do all of our attacking, we're going to make one decision. We are going to go on a pilgrimage. All right. So. If we go on a pilgrimage, it's unavailable for 15 years. We can choose a destination among our holy sites. So just to remind you what, what those holy sites look like. They're different. You can even click here. There are, so we could go here, 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 and here. You, just, you need to remember, if it's inside your territory, it's less likely that you p going on a pilgrimage that, pilgrimage there is going to cause problems if it's outside your territory like this one is you never know what can happen this one's outside our territory you never know what can happen so we're going to probably go to one of these three that are inside and the whole purpose of this is to get more piety so that we can reform our faith okay we want to reform it so let's go on our pilgrim all right so we get to choose which one we want to go to we're going to do niani we just took this one it's 50 you could do perhaps go somewhere else so the farther ones away are going to be a hundred the farther ones away um, will give you more piety you know what we're going to go farther away let's just do it let's get the piety we'll go I think this is Wad. nope let's add drawer where's Wad in yeah that was right it's that one okay so let's go to what in. All right, we'll unpause. It's time to depart. As I prepare for my journey, I know that I will travel safely under the protection of the gods. While I go with the great serpent, my realm must wait however long I may be gone. So we couldn't, we can't use him. Like if we were to attack right now, he wouldn't be available. Uh, so it's just something to keep in mind, if, especially if you have a, like a martial ruler. It's something to keep in mind. Among my fellow pilgrims, there is a woman who preaches compassion and fellowship until she reaches the topic of heathens. One evening around the campfire, she loudly declares them to be abominable monsters in the eyes of the gods, deviants and child murderers all. Most people avert their eyes when she looks at them. Tonight, I was not quick enough. Do you not agree, O Magan? They are not all bad, would give us domain taxes, opinion of different faiths plus 10, and different faith opinion plus 10. And I agree. 
I, and I would not trust anyone who came to their defense. So disdain for heathens, opinions of other faith, but levy reinforcement rate. You know what? We're going to do this just because this has way more positives. And I'm a learner. I think I would want, like if you just role play on this guy, I think I would want to learn about other cultures and religions to some level uh, because I'm humble, temperate, diligent. I, I probably would go this route anyway. Alright, I am finally here, body and soul, at the great temple of Ladan. As the Hogan offers me blessings, I reflect on everything that had to happen for the gods to bring me here at this moment in time. I have walked the holy path, so now I'm a pilgrim, which gives me plus 10% piety and plus 5 same faith opinion. I get 375 uh, piety, and then because your faith has the ancestor worship tenant, I get uh, plus 10 close family opinion. So this will help, like, if my son goes on this, his siblings may be less to attack him and try to take his territory. Because tribal, when you're in tribal, I mean, it happens in any government, but tribal, tribal, it definitely happens. The close family opinion does help you. There we go. Went up, and I'm getting even more. I'm already close to a devoted servant, so we're getting there. I wonder, let's look, let's pause real quick. Let's look at uh, reforming the faith. You have to be, oh, so it just as I'm, so I'm already good to reform it. I just need the three sites. <clears throat> now you may be thinking, you already had three sites. I have three, whoops, I have three sites in my territory, so this, uh, this one, this one, and this one, they're all in my territory, but this is not within our faith. It's in the Singuic faith. So when you go, come down here, when you go into Niani, there's Singuic. So that's why I want to convert it over. How long does that one have? 12 years left? Yeah, we're going to go ahead and switch this to Niani because I need this one to become my faith. <clears throat> 18 years. It takes a while. It, I mean, it, it's not easy to do these things. I mean, you got to remember this game. This game is over the course of, you know, 500 plus years. So they don't want you to be able to do everything within one lifetime. The goal is that you keep doing layers of this over your life or over the, the dynasty's life. And you just remember, I mean, as, as your dynasty keeps going... You're going to have people that are going to be really good at marshal, really good at stewarding, and you just expand where you can when they're good at those things. Let's see how we're doing on these areas. So it's 20 years, 34 years, so still moving along. Let's do some attacking. So let's take Can Can, because we can. <laughs> I know, bad. that's probably a bad ch dead joke, but whatever. Um... It is my your title, so I could do it for a hundred, or I do it for seventy-five. Well, obviously I'm going to do it for seventy-five. So let's declare war. We'll just raise all there. Come on, work with me. Is that my best guy? It is, and I'm home. He's actually got quite a decent army here. It's got a lot of men at arms. Give another one of our vet. We had to grant a title to a vassal. Do we have a count?
else where that is. Yeah. They're saying this guy's the best option. He is pretty good. I mean, he's got diplomacy, stewardship, and learning. His intrigue's pretty high. I'd rather have cynical than vengeful, though. See, ambitious, brave, and patient helps, but the others, I don't know. 13. I may do Golay or this guy. It gives me another. Give, it'll give me another really good champion. Okay. Let's do our available perk. <clears throat> so we keep trying to <laughs> do our faith journey here because we're trying to get piety to reform the faith. Prisoners. You're not letting him leave. The reason I don't really want to let him leave, I would <clears throat> I would execute him. Um, actually, we are going to execute him. Because all our guests lose five opinion of me. We, but we don't have any other guests. When they say guests there, they mean prisoners. It, so our guests are prisoners or up here. These top people. I'm perfectly fine. He's a four star and he has high intrigue. And so if I release him, some, he could get to a place where he doesn't have a high opinion of me. And then uh, he may want to come after me or somebody else may invite them into their court and then send him after me. That's why I'm hesitant to do that. I would also get piety. So we're just going to go ahead and execute him. Sorry, bud. I blame you. I blame the person who educated you. Designated guardian. So she's good at diplomacy and learning. She's good at diplomacy. So let's have. I can have an eleven, who's not very good. We're gonna do this one. She's good at learning. And she has high diplomacy, so I'm hoping that helps. We'll see. If not, I mean, there's this is such a detriment that I don't. It's just going to be hard anyway. And he, see, this is weird. <clears throat> She's stu she got the trait stupid from us. Okay, from me being educated, my wife uh, here. I. It makes me wonder. It really makes me wonder if this child is from another man, honestly. It really does. Because I don't have the trait stupid. She has intelligence. So it makes me wonder. Those are the things with intrigue and lustful that you can pay attention to. Where you're like, is this really my child? Because <laughs> I don't know how we got there. So you can pay attention to those things. I... It, it wouldn't surprise me if it comes out that she's not my child. But when you look at this, he is quick, which is an attribute of my wife. So I'm pretty confident he is mine. But that's, those are the things that you can look at. And it, why it matters is somebody can, somebody can do intrigue. Your oldest son may actually be their child. And if you hand off the kingdom to them, and like when you die, and, and they get... They become king, and then uh, somebody exposes, actually, you're not his son. You're this person's son. That kingdom switches, hand, like there's probably going to be a civil war or something, but then that kingdom actually switches lines and lineage, and that, that is a way that you can insert yourself into other kingdoms is that way. So I don't do that a lot with intrigue, but you can do it. All right, I think I'm going to do a lot of attacking in here and we'll probably see you on the other side of that. I will say that during some of these battles uh, I was swaying my wife and the reason I was swaying her is to get her to a high standing so that I could convert her 
uh, from Bori to Bidaic, which I just did. And so I wanted to show that. So just so um, I could keep that faith, like how she viewed me, so that we'd be the same faith. And I could trust that when she educated somebody, she would educate them into our faith. Uh, I would have that option. Uh, so just wanted to point that out as we keep going. All right, I got another lifestyle trait uh, perk. I wanted to show this. When you get profit, you can see here that your monthly piety per night goes up, but you also faith creation and reformation cost is negative 50%. So this is a big deal. If you want to reform the faith, you get this one. It's going to cost half the piety that it normally would. And so when you come in here, reform the bit of faith, that would have been 3400 but I get a negative 50%. I also get a negative 23% because of our current fervor. So it would cost 4400 Now I can do it for 1700 So as soon as I get this third site, as soon as it's converted, we'll be able to jump into that and reform that faith. And so hopefully we can do that in this episode. Hopefully we can do it in my lifetime. That's what we're trying to do. All right, I'm going to show you a little, it's not really a trick, it's just something to think through. So I'm over my domain limit now that I finally have taken this Duchy of Mandine, okay? I finally got it, but I'm over my limit. I'm trying to get there, so if I were to have the ledger, I would be able to keep that and this, Aquar. The reason I want to keep both of these, this is my most developed county, and so I, even though I'm going to move my capital... I want to try to keep this county as long as I can because it's the most developed. So it's going to help with levies and it's going to help with taxes. But I'd like to try to keep this whole duchy if I can. So what I did was I, I'm going to give Taban away to somebody. Okay, just because it's the lowest, de it's going to have the lowest development over time. Actually, I might, I might give Burr because it's not going to have that as much development. So, ooh, but it does have this. Yeah, it has the gold mine, so we don't want to give that away. We want to give this one away. What has that? That has the gold mines too. See, this is such a wealthy area right here. <laughs> so, you, you want to be careful giving these away. So, don't want to give that one away. I'll give this one away. When you grant it, if you know you kind of want to keep it and you know there's a chance you could get this domain um, limit to go up within your lifetime, which I think it could happen, one thing that you can do is you can just sort here. You can sort by age, and then you can just look for really old people, okay, as old as you can to give them away. Make sure you're not giving them away to people who already have titles, though. But like this guy, he's 55. Okay, so if I choose him, he's not married, he doesn't have any kids, he's 55, so it's highly probable that he will not have children, and so if he doesn't have children, uh, then when he dies, it comes back to me. All right, so if you do this well, and you can figure out how to do it, uh, you can keep the titles coming back at a later date, just giving them to people in their late 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, people that just... And in fact, uh, he's homosexual. So he's going to be less likely to get in a relationship. It's going to be harder for them to have children um, in this uh, setting. And he's 55, so he's already going to be, it's going to be harder for him to pass on that line anyway. Uh, he's also lazy. So there's a lot of good stuff in here why we would pass this on to this guy. It brings it down into our limit uh, so we can stay in our limit to keep these but we also know that there's a good chance we're going to get that back. So just something to think through. All right, I wanted to show you, now that I am illustrious in my fame, we can conquer a full duchy at the same time. And so I wanted to kind of give you an idea of how this works. So if you go in here, right-click, declare, I now can conquer a duchy. So I want you to see this. So you can see... It's not letting me go after the full thing because that land sits in two different duchies. All right, so the problem isn't that I'm not allowed to conquer more. The problem is that he owns land in two separate duchies. So if you come down to this guy and declare war, 
all of his land is in the same duchy, so I can take it if I had enough prestige, which I don't. But if I had enough prestige, I could go after the full thing. So I just wanted to catch that so you understand um, that being able to conquer a duchy is there, but you have to remember it may be in two different places. And so if it is in, in two separate duchies, you have to choose which duchy you want to attack. And being that it's one county in each, it's better to just save your prestige and attack one county. Okay, so we got our first available dynasty legacy. So when we click on that, we can come in here, we can choose anything we want. Um, because of where we're going, it would be easy to do domain limit and just follow the law where popular opinion, title creation costs, building costs, powerful vassal opinion, all those would be good. All of these are good depending on what you want to do. It just is dependent on what you want to do. I'm going to do the warfare first, at least for this, um, in this one, just because I want to make sure that my knights, my, that I can protect myself with my prowess, but also my knights are as effective as I can make them. Um, and then as we progress down here, I may not go all the way to here. I may come down to other areas, but for the, for the purposes of right now, I think I'm going to go here. Um, this is what we're doing um, more of the learning skill right now. That would be courier and guest opinion plus 10. Um, better guests will be attracted and guest recruitment costs is less. That's good. But let's see, here's development growth. I think I'm still going to go with this one first. It costs us 250 renown. And we've unlocked House of Warriors. And you can see it's back down to zero and it'll keep going. And as we put other people, I mean, right now we just have living members and a king. But as we have more uh, heirs and more people in our dynasty spreading out, it'll that'll increase because we'll have more in higher level positions. Okay, <clears throat> I just, I had told you about... Teban and the fact that I handed off to that 55 year old he just passed away whoops not down there it's not showing up but he just passed away and so it granted to me again I'm still not ready for this holding uh, let's see how far or how close we are to this so I'm, I'm within about 10 years so the next time this happens I actually could probably keep it so once again we'll do age 61 let's see if he he has no children um, it's likely that nothing's going to happen here. Uh, we'll see. So I'm going to, let's, let's just look. Let's see who the next option is here. 58, probably not. He's Songhai though. I want to keep it in Sanike. <laughs> we'll just give it to him. We'll see, if, see if we can go one more here. Okay. We now have over 400 gold, so I want to build this special building of gold mines in Gali because it's going to give me five more tax per month, which is huge, and development growth, and holding taxes. So this is like, <laughs> it's pretty incredible, okay? Uh, and you can actually develop it up to 14 a month. So this is like a very wealthy area. So you want to build this as soon as you can get to 400 and do it. It'll take four years to build, but in 892, we're going to be rolling. And uh, I can actually build another one here. And if he doesn't build it, I could actually build one here. <clears throat> if he doesn't build it, I can actually build one here. And while that doesn't directly help me, because I'm not getting the five right away, if I ever take over this duchy, I'll get it. And he's getting more taxes that I can tax. All right, so he, get, he gets more holdings that I can tax off of that. So I will see a little bit of that at least. So it's very important to build those special buildings. I went on some raiding, got some prestige, but also got over five or 400 gold. So now I can construct this other gold mine. We're going to have the money rolling in. I'm going to switch my capital over here very soon. We're almost converted our faith in our county. We also will be able to reform the faith at that point, so I'll jump back in for that. One other thing that I did want to point out is I'm, I'm over here fighting, trying to take this Fura Jalan County. 
um, or duchy, sorry. Um, and as I was doing it, I, I noticed that I have allies that because I'm marrying off my children now, I have allies out there. And you can call your allies into these wars. I'm not going to because I don't need them. But it may help you in other areas of the world where it'll cost you. So like if I call them into a war, it, it costs me prestige to bring them in. Uh, but then I get their whole army to help me as they're able to come in and help me. They can reject it, but obviously this guy's going to accept it. So just something to think through, or actually this woman is going to accept it. But something to think through um, as you're going to fight a war, They, the people you're going to fight may have allies, but you also could have allies to help you win it. So just something to think through as you declare war. So as you're in, going through your lifestyle traits, you'll get these life decisions that come up where you can, uh, and mine is to do a family history. And so you can see if I do something personal about a family history, I can add learning and a lifestyle skill. I can translate a book and get some learning and lifestyle skill, or I can just lose, choose to lose stress. It'll take you through a series of events that allow you to get there. So you may have to take on stress to do it, but just something to think through as you're choosing your lifestyle. These really do benefit you, um, but you need to know that You'll probably take on stress. You'll probably have to spend prestige or piety or money, um, but it does really benefit you, benefit you in the long run. Okay, so now we can actually reform our faith. You can see in Niani, we have switched to Bidiism. So when you go into our faith and you see the holy sites, we now ha we actually have four holy sites that belong to our faith, and we are the owner of one, two, three of them. We have the Gen one, but we haven't converted that into Bidiism yet, which we will do. We'll all start doing that after this. But now that we have that, we can go down here into our faith, and we can reform it. And you see, we have the option now. So we have 3,200 piety. We're getting a lot of piety every month. So if we actually go over this, we might have to wait a little bit. But you can see the different options. So um, it'll show you here, just to walk through some of this, this is what we are currently, okay, and we can switch all of these things, um, but we can't switch, if we choose a tenant, we can't disagree with that tenant down here in the doctrines. So doctrines and tenants have to work together. As long as they work together, you're fine. Now, it may switch your vir virtues and your sins, like some of these virtues could become sins, some of these sins could become virtues, depending on what you change, um, but you just got to know that uh, whatever you shift can uh, change your faith. So you can show your vassals here so that if you reform your faith, if we create something massively different, okay, we could keep it just Bidiism and reform it and we're fine. All of our vassals are going to go with us. Okay, they're all going to convert. If they don't convert with you, you may have to think through, do we need to replace them? Do we need to revoke their title? Are, are we up for battles to make sure everybody is our faith, all of those things. And then these are just some explanations here of what's going on. So our old Bidious faith will consider us astray. So they don't consider us evil or wicked, we're just astray. So let's walk through some of these tenets that can switch. So currently, we have adaptive, ancestor worship, human sacrifice. You can just click on one of these, and it'll give you all the options. So these, these are all options that you can go. And you can just go down through and decide which ones you want to work for you. So where you want to go, so like this one, carnal exaltation, it makes lustful a virtue. It makes chaste a sin. So if you know that you're going to play the intrigue characters, and you're going to try to seduce a lot of people and go that route and you can reform the faith this would be a good one because it would really allow it would make this really good for you like that is something that people would be like oh good job you did it like that it changes your faith you can't change too much so like if we went let's try this if we if we changed too much it wouldn't let you let's go back to human sacrifice if you change your tenets too much you'll start seeing that less vassals will convert. This won't be a stray. You'll be radically different. Um, so you just got to think through that on your tenants. Like, do you want to switch them? What do you want to switch to in this? So what's your view on gender? You can switch that. You can go equal. All right. The benefits of going equal is, I mean, on a succession level, uh, both 
men and women can be commanders and knights. That's good. So that if you have if you have really good female uh, champions, they can fight with you now. Um, but you have to understand that if you switch to this, that the succession could change to your daughters also getting succession. So right now in succession, it just goes, we have three sons. It's going to be divided out to those three sons. That's how it happens. But if we go equal, it could go to our daughters as well, and it's going to be split out more. You just got to you gotta know that that's a possibility there. This pl pluralist, righteous, and fundamentalist, so the plural, plural, Ugh, that is, <laughs> let's try that again, Plur, pluralist, there we go, the pluralist is, uh, you're basically allowing other faiths to happen within your area, it's not a big deal if other people have faiths in your area, righteous says, if somebody's evil, I can revoke their title, and a fundamentalist says, if they're hostile or evil, I can revoke their title, so, I want people in our faith to be uh, vassals for us, so I'm going to choose fundamentalists. Now, all of our vassals are staying with us because we kept up all, all of our vassals as Bidius and Sininke, so that helps. Head of faith, so right now we don't have a head of faith. You can do a whoops, spiritual head of faith, which is the head of faith can grant claims on landed titles to pious adherents. The head of faith can grant gold. To buy pious so uh, this head of faith and then temporal is um, like you have a local religious head of faith over your areas so it would be like this guy he would be over my specific areas all right so um, clerical so you can have the theocratic um, clerical tradition which is this he, you have a specific religious leader you can also do lay clergy which allows secular rulers directly control of their own temple holding so if i choose this as we build temples i have direct rule over them it doesn't go to somebody else okay so this can be really huge if you do that and then you do th the head of faith i'm i'm gonna be whoever the ruler is is the head of faith and i'm the lay clergy so i get complete control over my church holdings okay they will count towards my domain limit though if i specifically have hold over them but then i'm the head of faith and so as people uh, as people want uh, to be absolved of their sins or stuff they will pay you to be that head of faith so it's a way to make a lot of money like it, you can make a lot of money doing this so uh, and no one can tell you that you're wrong because you're the head of faith. <laughs> so it's very interesting. We'll go that route just to have some fun. Uh, we'll see what it looks Marriage type, you can do consorts and concubines. That's fine. Divorce is always allowed. Uh, we're going to allow cousin marriage. And then we, you can legitimize a bastard, which is huge for if you, um, if someone in your family and your lineage, like it, uh, so let's say, you you committed adultery with somebody else but you can legitimize and say nope that really is my son and then they can fall into your line uh so it does help you do that i'm going to leave it as so um i'm going to kind of leave all these other things kind of as so the control i'm going to do recruitment because i want my clergy to be able to have I want them to be able to serve as commanders and champions and have a better prowess. So we're going to allow recruitment. I don't care which clerical gender they are. I, I'm fine with either. It gets the best person in there. I like temporal and re revocable because if I don't have somebody good in here, I can replace them. I want that. And then clerical marriage is allowed, of course. It gets more people into my uh, kingdom area. So let's look at these and just see if there's a good one maybe. Um, conversion speed in counties of my culture goes way up with this. And conversion speed in counties of a different culture, it goes way down. So as long as they're my culture, we can have my faith grow very rapidly. Um, and I, I'm okay with that over rating for captives. I don't really care about that. Or executions give piety. So we're going to do communal identity. Um 
County conversion resistance, we like that. Ancestor worship. You gain additional and maximum long. I kind of like these. I don't know that there's going to be another one that I'm going to... I'm going to do more than this. There's a lot of them. Like, you can do whatever you want here. Here's a county conversion speed. So characters of this, this faith gain an additional bonus upon the successful completion of a pilgrimage. And temperate is considered a virtue. I might actually like that because the conversion speed is plus 33. Whereas this, if it's your culture, you can go one and a half times. I'm actually, I might go communal and medicant. gives you more as you complete pilgrimages so we don't want pacifism we're gonna go take stuff um, this is an interesting one rulers with high learning may condemn their sinful vassals so we could do that we're not gonna do that though but you can see this one's an interesting one too if you really want to have a a very militant martial culture you can do warmonger and then at peace opinion uh, the at peace opinion instead of offensive war opinion. So if you keep doing offensive war after offensive war, people get frustrated with you because you keep fighting everyone. If you do warmonger, if you're at peace, people get actually frustrated with you because they're like, why aren't we fighting? Why aren't we Why aren't we going to war? So you can switch it to warmonger if you just want to keep attacking things all the time. This is a good one to have. This is up to you. But I'm going to leave it there. All of our vassals are going to go with us. Oh, but I need 35.50. So we need a little bit more piety. So let's fast forward, do that, and then um, get to reforming the faith. All right. I'm actually going to switch medicant preachers. I do like this some more. I do like making temperate a virtue. But I'm going to switch to communal identity so that we can switch our faith. Now, you can see adaptive is not allowed, probably because we have something that is uh, keeping it from happen. Oh, okay. So here, we can't have adaptive because it requires the doctrine pluralistic. So when you go down here, adaptive is you're okay with other faiths and uh, you kind of work together. That's what pluralist, pluralist is. We switched it to fundamentalist, so that means the tenant doesn't work with the attitude and the doctrine, so they have to work together. So we will switch adaptive. We'll find another one here. Um, a set to, uh, that's a lot. So let's look for a smaller one because we're within we're within our stuff here. So let's um, let's see if there's a benefit from a small like five hundred to a thousand one. Let's do this one, es esotericism. <laughs> esotericism, holy cow. <laughs> Children with the learning education focus may gain the wise man trait if they do well at their studies. Make the following traits virtues, and I have this, so I would, I would actually get the virtue for this. So we're almost kind of becoming, honestly, this is looking very, very similar to like a Buddhist type of faith, honestly. If you go over into China, it's going to start looking like this. All right, so we can reform our faith now. So we'll do reform faith. Total cost is 3175. We can afford that. We will create and we have our Bidiism faith. So you can see when we go into faith or if you do the faith map here that most of us are already Bidaic. Okay. There's a few of us that are old Bidaic. You'll probably see some of them switch over time. But you're going to also see that we're going to be able to convert counties much quicker that are in our culture because that's part of our tenants now is right here. Um, we didn't add that one, did we? Yeah, right here, communal identity. So we can switch our speed in counties. So as long as we have a county that is of our culture and we've got it started going here, we can get that faith going even faster. So... 
see five years it took us 18 to do it the first time and we can just start converting cultures All right, so that's how you reform the faith. So that is done. All right, one more thing I'd like to show you is how to switch your kingdom capital. Okay, you can do this within whether it's you have a duchy and you want to switch the county that it's in, whether you have an empire or a kingdom, you can switch it. So we're going to switch from right here in Akbar, okay, in the county of Akbar, Al Gaba, Geba. We want to switch it to Niani and the duchy of. Manding, or that's the kingdom, Duchy of Manding. So we want to switch it here. There's a little thing right here. It says county capital. This is already our county capital. And this says move realm capital here, which is what we want to do. And what it's going to do is it's going to change the succession right here. So right now, our oldest son is going to get our highest title, which is the kingdom of Ghana. Our second son will get the kingdom of Mali, and our third son will get the kingdom of Jen. I want to switch this so that our oldest son gets the kingdom of Mali and our player error continues with Mali. So when you do that, you say move realm capital to capital here. Some buildings in Chief of Aquar may become inactive. We know that. So it'll be the new realm capital. Move. So now it is new there, okay? We have moved it. And so when you come out of here, we go back into succession still the kingdom of Ghana still the kingdom oh I've got to switch let me switch this we're gonna do this we're gonna put so you have to go into the kingdom of Mali so how I did that click on there these are the different titles we have all right we have the kingdom of Mali title we're gonna make this our primary title so we're gonna switch it from Ghana being our primary title to Mali make it primary and now our succession laws have switched and so succession now our oldest son gets the best duchy our second oldest or best duchy in the wealthiest kingdom our second son will get Akwar, and he'll get this duchy and he'll get the kingdom of Ghana and our third son will get the kingdom of Jen okay if we can make it to Empire we'll be over it all but that's gonna be a tough go but we'll try to do that next time and then uh, I think I'm going to do a couple more episodes. We'll try to form the empire just so you can see it. We'll also deal with a uh, succession. So if I do die, I mean, we'll play until I die, hand it off to the sons because I have multiple sons. So you can see what that would look like. And then from there, really all that would be left was to go from tribal to feudal. I'll show that. And then we'll be on. Uh, really, it's just going to be pretty repetitive. I'll just keep doing that in whatever area of the world that you want. So I hope that you've learned a lot about reforming faith and moving your kingdom capital. Uh, look forward to seeing you next time. If you can like and subscribe, that would help me out. I appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.